Hi, I'm posting this as a video response to Gary's video, part two, although it looks like everybody's doing responses to part one. But in this video of his, um, in the comments, Matt and I were discussing about Matt's dilemma about how can, how can consciousness come from dead matter. And so I'm going to post it here, and I, uh, it's a little bit of a response to Gary, who I basically agree with his materialistic view about consciousness, but I think Gary takes it a little too far, or maybe he, he kind of takes the poetry out of it. And so, and then I think Matt, I like Matt's view, but sometimes he takes it a little too far on the other side, so I think I fall somewhere in between. Matt was saying in the comments to a couple other people and Gary about how he'd like to hear Gary explain how consciousness pops out of a purely objective material universe. And he asked, how do atoms become alive and sentient? Now, I'm not an extreme materialist like Gary. I'm a borderline or skeptical mystic, maybe an agnostic mysticism. But I do feel it is relatively simple to see how consciousness arises out of the complexity of organization in a brain. I think, pun intended, that consciousness is, a, is an emergent property of complexity. As Wiki puts it, quote, the way complex systems and patterns arise out of a multiplicity of relatively simple interactions, end quote. Neurons are brain cells. We have 100 billion neurons. Neurons have thousands of synaptic connections to other neurons. There are a quadrillion synapses. I have bipolar, so I've read a lot about how the brain works. The synapses, memory, and so on. And in science, they've been learning a lot lately. And of course, they don't know everything about the brain yet. So memory is a survival mechanism, and a major side effect is the sense of self, me, I, like the George Harrison song. Lower level in animals to much more complex in Homo sapiens. Consciousness, self-awareness, reflection is a major, major step forward. I don't intend to belittle it. Gary makes it way too simple and unnuanced. What really sets humanity apart is our capacity for abstraction, abstract thought, the use of symbols, language. People always point out some parallel with animals, and, there, and they are, there are, but nothing to the degree that people are capable of. I'm sure some of you know of Julian James' book about the bicameral mind, how this would be thousands of years ago, how we heard our other brain hemisphere as outside voices, gods, or spirits, until we developed an interior self in both hemispheres. This is debated. Also, look at people with brain injuries, illnesses as clues to the brains or our minds, complexity, autism, savants. There's a woman who can recall every day, every detail of her life, from after the age of 13 to now in her late 30s. She has a book out. Brain chemistry, hallucinations, psychedelics. I don't write off all visionary experiences as chemically created illusions. There may be something more to it. I may be a fence-sitter, but I use different systems as models and metaphors. My Eastern philosophy si side sees us all as interconnected, all part of the Tao. The oneness of the Tao manifesting as apparently discrete objects, like the waves of the ocean or the facets of a diamond, seemingly separate but actually a part of a greater whole. Alan Watts always said how we are God's way, the universe's way, of looking at itself. I always like that, poetically. That's why there is nothing as unique as looking into another person's eyes. Like that. Although in person. Now I'm agnostic when it comes to the soul. I might describe the soul as the interface between spirit and matter. Like a prism. Think of the cover of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon, where the pure white light is God, the universe. The prism is the soul or psyche or mind and the spectrum of colors is the manifestation of matter into polar opposites and variety. People like C Ray Kurzweil, Kurzweil and SF writers with PhDs talk about AIs one day reaching consciousness. Not a simulation of awareness, but true awareness. This evolving from their complexity. Not from program code, but neural nets, etc. But that's a whole other discussion. Now, unlike animals, our advanced level of self-awareness lets us alter our environment. 
beyond what animals are capable of, even to the point of our possibly destroying our environment or maybe redesigning it. We can plan for our future individually and collectively, and most uniquely, we can look at ourselves to ponder our selves. And that gets into psychology and psychiatry, a whole other elaborate subjects. Now I have to go watch the three hour, the friggin' three hour season finale of Lost. <laughs>